Hey guys, Phone Arena here with the Motorola i886. The 886 is a curious device for a couple reasons. First off, it's a new form factor for Nextel. It's got a sliding QWERTY keyboard, which we've not seen on an iDead device thus far. It is a full military spec phone for dust, shock, vibration, extreme temperatures, and pressure. It's not waterproof like we recently saw with the Sanyo Tahoe, but this is still a pretty tough phone. On the back here you can see there's a 2 megapixel camera. We also have a locking mechanism for the back door. You have to slide this up and then pry, which isn't the easiest thing in the world. You do have to get to the back door to access the micro SD card. It comes with a 2 gigabyte card and can support ones up to 32 gigs. On the left side of the phone here we'll find the volume rocker and direct connect button. On the right side we see a camera key and the micro SD charging port. On the top is a speaker button, and we also have a 3.5mm headset jack, which does not have the IDEN ring for making direct connect calls over a wired headset. Down at the bottom of the chin here, we can see the speaker protrudes out a little bit from where the phone slides open. As we're pretty used to with direct connect phones, the speaker is quite loud, and for doing things like speakerphone or even music, it's pretty good. On the front here we have a 2.2 inch QVGA display. Below it is your traditional keypad. You've got a home key, a menu key, a back key, a notification key, and then your 12 key dial pad. The QWERTY keyboard is not too bad. It reminds us a lot of the Droid 2 Global in terms of touch and feel. The keys are a little bit stiff. We're not sure if you can hear that, but there is a definite click every time you press it, which is nice. For the most part, we didn't have any issues typing with this. However, sometimes the stiffness caused us to miss a key, or because of the size, every now and again we'd hit the B when we were trying to hit the space bar. Overall, though, it's a pretty good feel, and though you can't see it now, it's got a very cool blue backlight when it's lit up. The other thing that makes the i886 so interesting is the operating system. We reached out to Sprint and Motorola for a comment on this. However, all we got back was that it's a proprietary OS running on Java. This, however, isn't the case. You can scroll left and right, and for anybody real familiar with the cell phone world, clearly see this looks very much like Android. Opening the app drawer, we find the Android apps. In fact, this notification button here opens the notification shade, just like Android. This is definitely an Android device, although it's not a touchscreen like we're used to. We can still move the widgets around. We have our traditional Android settings menu here. And we go down to the bottom option, the About Phone. We can see that it is indeed a Linux-based operating system. Here we find the baseband and kernel and the build number, although there is no operating system information. Our best guess is that this is probably running Android 1.5, maybe 1.6. It doesn't really matter though because while this is an Android phone, it's not a Google phone. There are no Google applications to be found here, including Gmail, The Market, Google Talk, Google Maps, or any other Google applications. And there's no way to install them. Now that makes a lot of sense for something like The Market because most of the apps out there aren't going to work with this phone since it's not a touchscreen device. However, it would be nice to see something like Gmail so users can easily sync their contacts and calendar to the phone. We do see an email program. It will support a Gmail account, it just doesn't have the sync features in there. It also supports POP3, IMAP, and Exchange. One of the other things that we found odd is that in the settings menu under the accounts and sync there is no Google account. We can add accounts but the only option is to add an Exchange account. This will allow users to set up and configure syncing their contacts and calendar if they're tied to an exchange account, which most users probably won't be on a device like this. There is a workaround with Gmail where you can configure it such, but most users, again, probably won't know about that and won't be out there searching. The target audience for a device like this is more the messaging-centric crowd and somebody who needs a rough phone. This isn't a smartphone, and it's not geared to those type of users. It's very interesting that we're seeing Android utilized in this aspect. If you think back to the very first time Android was introduced, they actually showed it running on a non-touch device. This was of course back in the prototype days, 
and they also showed Run running with the touchscreen. Android wasn't meant for just smartphones, and they made a point of that at the introduction. Thus far, however, all we've seen is touchscreen smartphones. We're starting to see it creep into the low end. The Optimus S and the Motorola Citrus are both good examples of low end Android devices, but they're still all touch and they're still smartphones. This is the first time we've seen Android be running on a feature phone. We should note it's not the first time we've seen Android without G apps. Um, several tablets out there from cheap manufacturers that we've seen from Kmart and China and things of that nature have run Google, excuse us, have run Android without the support of Google applications. And if you think to your, some of your favorite ROMs, such as Cyanogen, it doesn't actually come with Google Apps. You have to find that separately. Android is separate from Google, although at this point the two have almost become synonymous. The 886, however, shows us that it doesn't need a smartphone, a touchscreen, or high-end hardware to run quite smoothly. Everything's running quickly on this. We had no issues with delay or lag, and we can definitely see Android is a great option for a low-end operating system. It would be nice, however, to at least have Gmail, as well as things like Google Maps and Google Talk, so that we can contact, sync, and things of that nature. It would make switching phones much easier for carriers and customers. This is the second Android device we've seen on Nextel, although the first one, the i1, was a with Google device. One of the things we do see on the i886 is Opera Mini, which is nice. This was also the default browser for the i1, however, the i1 did have Wi-Fi, and the 886 does not. Let's load a relatively simple page, like ESPN here. As you can see, over the iDen network, this takes a little bit longer than you're used to. Even over 2G, it loads a little bit quicker. And as you can see, this is a more basic version of the page than you're used to for the ESPN landing page. However, it's usable, and Opera Mini is a good web browser for this because it compresses data so much, and makes getting to simple web pages such as this somewhat quick. The stock Android browser is also available for those who prefer that, although it's not as data light, so Opera Mini is our suggestion. In terms of other connectivity, it does have Bluetooth 2.1 with EDR in this case. It also has GPS, and we can see that Telenav is loaded for GPS navigation turn-by-turn -turn style. You also have Sprint Football Live and NASCAR, as well as Nuance Voice Control for excellent voice command services. Though it doesn't have a marketplace, the Git Jar App Store is loaded on the device, and a Java runtime environment is included to run these Java apps. When Sprint told us this was a Java device, it wasn't entirely untrue. Though it's not based on it, it does have this environment. And for a Nextel phone, just being able to run apps like this is pretty cool. The apps are obviously not of the same quality that you'd find in the marketplace, however, it's something and allows the user to download some basic games and other things of that nature. Like we mentioned, we can also manage the home screen. There are widgets available, although they're very basic. We can move things around. Say, for instance, we want to take the clock to the other screen. It's pretty easy to do. And if we want to add something else, we have a, a small little list of widgets, such as music, your clock and calendar, the NASCAR app, a picture frame, and some other basic things. Overall, we're quite intrigued with the Motorola i886. It's a good solid device. Our one complaint is that when it's open like this, there is some play in the flip. Not sure if you can hear that here, but even when we just shake it, that'll move. However, when we put some pressure on it, it doesn't feel like it's going to snap by any means. It is on there pretty solid, and as you can see, this back plate is metal so it's made out of quality materials. The keypad's good. We like the feel of both the front and the inside keys. The phone has a really generous coating of soft touch paint on it, which gives it a good solid feel in the hand overall. Voice quality was pretty good, especially on our end. Users did have a little bit of complaints about hollowness and echo. However, they rated us an 8 out of 10, and we'd probably go a little bit higher, giving it a 9. Battery life is okay. It's rated for four hours of talk time, which is fairly standard for a Nextel device. A little bit on the low end, if anything, but you keep in mind, this is running a semi-smartphone OS. The ruggedness makes this a very attractive phone, as does the portrait sliding QWERTY keyboard. We're more intrigued with the 
fact that this is running Android. We would like to see it have at least a few Google apps, but think that this can mark a really cool milestone for Android and running on feature phones and not just smartphones. If you're a Direct Connect user, this is a great phone to look at. The i1 is going to be a better smartphone, but if you're looking for something that's a little bit cheaper, the i886 runs for 80 bucks as compared to the 150 for the i1. With the physical QWERTY keyboard, the i886 is a pretty solid choice.